notice the track. It blows you away. Oh, uh, look, you're, you're on the raggedy edge. You see how close the walls are and the trees are over. Do you treat this circuit with a lot of I wasn't paying attention the first time I came down Conrad. Mate, it caught me by surprise that last rise. The car went light, my guts went up, and off. Every lap since, I think I've given a Yahoo every time we've gone over. It's like a roller coaster. I love it. Oh, the battles, that's the most amazing part. I mean, like, if you're out on your own, uh, it's not as exciting, but when you're actually duelling with other cars, that's, that's what we're here to do is race. Um, if you're, you know, it, on, racing on your own, it's not exciting, but what makes it exciting is actually duelling with other people. I just see it as a privilege to actually race on a certain now, it's such an iconic circuit. Uh, you know, when you you grab looking at Bathurst on the telly and looking at all your heroes go around and to actually come here and race yourself is it's unbelievable. Great insights there into this special racetrack from our production touring car drivers. This weekend, 50 cars have made the trek here to Mount Panorama for the opening round of the 2013 Championship. We have an hour enduro to kick things off and get them underway. Thank you for joining us for this, our first television highlights of 2013. The race got underway with highlights, with Peter O'Donnell's BMW getting stuck on the grid and having to be towed away from the start line. He was luckily able to start later on from pit lane without an issue. That left 49 cars still on the grid, ready to take the start. And as expected, it was Ryan Simpson who led the field away to turn one. He'd been strong all weekend and will continue to run strongly into the race. It was a big question to see whether all the field would be able to manage to get through. And without incident, all of them did. to hit the track in Australia. The other is the Pedders Racing Toyota 86, so we actually had two on the grid this weekend. They were out trying to get some test mileage done and still fighting for camps and relegations. So, invitation this weekend to the mountain for production touring cars. And you can see that they're racing well. And already, halfway around the first lap, Ryan Simpson was starting to show a very handy lead. The rest of the field here streaming through. Everyone sorting themselves out, trying to find the right line, the right rhythm. As we come back down the mountain, just look at the lead Ryan Simpson already has over the rest of the field. Steve Shelley here holding off Jim Polisino and Matt Holt. As they come streaming down a line of Commodores, Commodore Cup and Jerry Murphy already making his way through the field very quickly after starting in a lowly position on the grid due to some early mechanical issues and having a fault in the race which meant that he got relegated slightly down the field. As we watch this big field of production touring cars come through, the biggest at Mount Panorama this weekend with 50 cars, it just goes to show the strength of this category and how well everything is running to be able to entice everybody to the series. Here's Jim Polisina in the HSV GTS. He was running well all weekend and currently sitting fourth place early in the race, just having a watching brief on the Shelly Shelly car with Steve Shelly at the wheel. Coming down Conrad, let's have a listen to the Commodore. Doesn't that sound magnificent? Big Aussie V8 rolling away down the straight. Keeping up with the Evos, everybody thought maybe the Evos might run away a bit here, but they knew that down the straights the Commodores would have their measure, and from the very early stages this was proving to be the case. Only a lap in, but much further into a race than we have at some other tracks, with the, with the field lapping 
in about the 2 minute 35 mark for Ryan Simpson, the leader, 2 minute 36. The rest of the field, of course, slightly slower than that. Here's Jerry Murphy continuing to make his way through the field. He would steadily move up in the Evo. The power of the four-wheel drive, just a bit too much out around the corners for the Commodores to be able to stand. As Ryan Simpson continues to make hay while the sun shines, staying out in the lead, it would not be long though before he started catching lap traffic. Let's just enjoy going across the top of the mountain with Ryan Simpson, pedalling this Evo 10 very well. Just look at the way he's clipping the curbs here, finding a perfect line across the top. And down the hill, we get to see an example of the gap here in the very early stages. There's Burgess in second. He was putting in good times, respectable times on his own before Shelley, Policina, Holt, and the rest of the field comes streaming on through. Here's the other 86, piloted by an actor well known to Australian screens for his role as Kenny, or in the Australian top gear, Shane Jacobson, having his first circuit race at the mountain. A bit of a daunting experience to be starting at the mountain. The heat started to run himself in well, taking his time in the 86 and just getting getting used to the track, used to the car, used to how everything operates. This camera angle actually gives you a great view of the look of concentration across the top as well. And how much concentration you need to be able to keep a car like this on the road. It's no mean feat to be able to be pushing this hard and staying so well on the racing line. Down the mountain, you can see the real strengths and weaknesses of cars at Bathurst with the little swifts proving their agility right across the top until they get in a straight line. Unfortunately there, the power just gets away from them. This being the first running for the Toyota 86 and the Pedders team, they're looking to get it ready for the National Series this year for a full-on assault at the AMC title. On board with Peter Lau. And you can see there Steve Shelley having a major engine issue, melting a piston and forcing himself off at the chase. After nearly four hours of racing last year, the first safety car comes in the first 15 minutes of racing here as Wilbo has a bit of it off at turn one. Slightly past us there, our cameraman, as the yellow flags come out for the safety car. Now the field would spend almost 15 minutes behind the safety car as they collected Steve Shelley's car from the chase, which meant a long period of break. Earlier on in the weekend, we had a chat to Jim Policina about Bathurst, production touring cars and racing the Holden at the mountain. Bathurst is a great track, um, it's an emotional track, everyone loves Bathurst, it's the holy grail of motorsports. Um, this country loves its V8 supercars and that's what they do, they race around there and, uh, and we love it. Right, driving the track it's exhilarating, um, it's a very high commitment track and it rewards the brave. Uh, it's a very fast track as well, so it's always fun to race at Bathurst no matter what you're in. I had a couple of guys wanting to race the Evos and it was for a default more than anything else. Uh, but I love the Commodores. Commodores around Bathurst are a lot of fun. Um, they make a great noise going across the top. Uh, they're really good under brakes. So I'm quite happy to take the Commodore out for a bit of a run. Yeah, it's been a while since we raced that car. It's been um, pretty much under wraps for a couple of years. We took it out to Wakefield um, last year and had a bit of a run in it, but a few issues. Uh, mechanical issues with the car, not performing as well as what I would have liked. Um, I think we're on top of all that now, so I'm pretty sure it'll be, uh, be a strong package. I'd love to do more production touring car racing for New South Wales. It's a great club. Um, some of my national commitments, unfortunately, don't allow that. Um, I'll be at a couple of them just running the team. Uh, I'd like to have another pedal. Um, there's a couple of endurance races coming up. I think there's one in uh, Wakefield in particular I've got my eye on, so I might uh, get a co-driver with me jump into an Evo and have a bit of a, a, bit of a skid there. Welcome back to the mountain where we're under green flag again for the continuation of this hour enduro. The green flag coming at the, just before the 20 minute marker which meant that everybody had to do one more lap before they could actually come into the pits and effect their first pit stop for the race meeting if they decided to do it at the beginning of the pit stop window with a lot of cars deciding to do it early on just to get themselves out of traffic. Here we go on board again with Peter Lown coming out of turn one. You can just see the congestion again that the safety car caused 
by having it so early in the race, bringing everybody back together when the field hadn't quite sorted itself into a rhythm yet, which meant a lot of cars were still climbing all over each other as we went back up the mountain. Back on board with Chris Reeves in the Toyota 86. Let's have a listen to this Toyota running across the top. A loud bang there and Chris looking in the mirror. Now it was Kevin Herbin who was behind him. He may well have given him a hit there. Let's have a listen to Chris. Yep, and he confirms it. Kevin Herbin hitting him up the backside as the first lot of cars come into the pit lane to take their pit stop for the race meeting. Now, if you're a single driver like Jim Stewart, you just had to get out of the car, stand next to it, close the door, get back in with a tire coming off onto the ground and back onto the car. If you're a two driver team, this was the time to swap your drivers. So you can see the pit lane became a hive activity. Here's Shane Jacobson exiting the vehicle, getting out of the Toyota 86. Chris Reeves decided to effect his pit stop very early on in the piece as well, bringing the other Toyota 86 in. And Dean Potts brought the Holden Club Sport in for a pit stop early on as well. Meanwhile, Jerry Murphy decided to stay out on the racetrack, making hay while the sun shone, with a little bit of air between him and some of the other racers. He started putting in some quick lap times to start trying to fight his way back to the front of the field, trying to find his way to gain some points. Jim Polisina and comes back out onto the racetrack. Let's have a listen to this HSV GTS roar its way around the mountain. Sound. We'll be back after this short break with more production touring cars from Mount Panorama. Welcome back to Mount Panorama here for the conclusion of the production touring cars one hour endurance race highlights. Late in the race with pit stops finally being finished off you can see how the track became another cram packed full of activity. There wasn't much space left on the track with 50 cars going around for anybody to find any sort of room. And as tyres got old, everybody got a bit more slippery through the S's. A few cars deciding to have a few little moments. 
is Dean Potts coming across the top of the mountain as we've got camera on top of the car and in the car to have a good look at how Dean goes across the top. And there's an example of how congest congestion at the mountain can affect things. Burgess having an issue lapping some traffic, trying to get past and keep his, man, his uh, speed up, having to cut across the grass there at the S's. Luckily, no harm was done to either car and they both could continue racing as Dean Potts continued his way down the mountain, pushing hard, driving harder and harder every lap. But it was the final lap of the race where the major moment happened with Ryan Simpson suffering a delaminating tyre forcing him to slow down. Just have a listen here with the onboard. You'll hear the tyre let go. And there it is. The tyre delaminating completely on Simpson forcing him to limp around the track. He had over a 45 second lead on second place Matt Holt and third place Jim Polisina just coming into shot now in the black Commodore. The two of them would try their absolute hardest to chase Simpson down, pushing harder into the final lap. Jim Polisina having Matt Holt in his sight. Matt Holt hearing from the pit lane that Ryan Simpson had had a problem. Both of them could smell further positions, though it would be Matt Holt who could smell the victory. He was pushing hard. Ryan Simpson, meanwhile, forced to negotiate one of his slowest laps of the track. It was sheer disaster for the Mitsubishi Evo driver. He'd been lapping up to four seconds a lap quicker than anybody else on the circuit all weekend. As Jim Polisina continues to look, this gives you an idea of how the gap is closing. Jim coming into the cutting here, taking the cutting, pushing out the other side while Ryan Simpson is just coming across into McPhillamy Park and into Skyline. You can see there cars that he has lapped previously now passing him with ease across the top of the mountain. Down into the S's, passed again there by Kerry Morsink from Savvy IT, one of the major sponsors of the category. And there's Matt Holt in second place. You can see the gap has visibly shortened between the first two runners. And Jim Polisina comes across the top in third. He's closing on Matt Holt. It's going to be a race to the finish to see who actually makes the finish line first. With Ryan Simpson still leaping, only at Forest Elbow. He's not going to make it. There's no way that two flying Commodores would not be able to catch him in the length of Conrad Strait. An agonizingly slow ride down Conrad Strait for Ryan Simpson. And there you can see Ryan Simpson on the left being passed by Matt Holt and Matt Holt goes past for the lead. Finally into the chase, Matt Holt takes the lead of this Enduro. The white flag for Jim Polisena as he comes past his pole Evo to take second place away from Ryan Simpson. Disaster for Simpson there, but a thrilling result for Matt Holt, taking one back for the Commodores. And as he gasses it round the kind of corner, he nearly throws it into the wall. Look at him sliding over the finish line to take the chequered flag. What an astounding result for the end of this race. As Jim Polisena comes across the line in second, and the limping Ryan Simpson comes across in third. We caught up with Jim Polisena after the race at his workshop, Pole Performance, to have a chat to him about the weekend. We're back here with Jim after a great weekend of racing up at Bathurst, back at the Policina Motorsports head office. Um, Jim, there's a few damage, a bit of damage to a few of the cars. What happened out there? Um, well, the uh, number two car, uh, Ryan, was doing pretty well. He led pretty much the whole weekend with only two laps to go and unfortunately delaminated a front tyre, which cost him the race win. He was so far in the lead, um, there's no one's going to catch him. I think he's lapped up, ever, up to about P8. <clears throat> So that cost him, and then Jerry decided to um, uh, tag somebody on the way through and uh, took a corner off the car, which we obviously got it fixed and got the car back out there for the final race. But um, you know, a little bit of damage here and there. That's just life, I guess. That was a big move by Jerry in the Saturday race. It caused a lot of work for the team on Sunday. How late were you at the track? Um, we were lucky enough to get the bits that we needed to get the car going. We broke a cooler, and uh, unfortunately, cut a long story short, we didn't have one with us. 
Um, so we managed to borrow one, um, but we did most of the work on Saturday night. So Sunday morning, we just had to do a couple of small things. So it was a few hours worth of work. And um, Ryan, at one point, was looking at going at the lap record to have a crack at it. You ended up not doing that. Was there a reason behind it at all? Yeah, well, we didn't necessarily want to put a set of soft tyres on the car. Uh, the previous lap record was held by an RX-7 running some you know, slick tyres or something. Yeah. Um, so you know, on an R spec and an EVA, I reckon we would have come pretty close, but um, we just decided just to stick with the um, compound that we were using and, and just put around about a second off that pace. Yeah. And how'd the Commodore go for the weekend? You got a pretty good result there at the end? Yeah, Commodore was strong. Um, didn't have quite the speed of the Evos in a straight line, yeah. but under brakes and across the top, she was, she was pretty good. Yeah, it's always great to um, race a Commodore around Bathurst. Uh, we ended up with second. Um, partly due to Ryan delaminating a tyre, but um, I think Matty Holt finished in front of us. Um, strong result for that car, 6.2 litres. You know, they're not bad in a straight line, but um, you know, the old 5.7 did OK, so I was pretty happy with the pace of the car. You were catching Matt there towards the end and catching him quite well in traffic. Did you think you had a chance of having a shot at him at any point? Um, I wasn't too sure where I was, to be honest with you. Um, I lent my radios to everybody else, so I had no radios. <laughs> so when I had to pit, they just, they just waved me in, so I had no idea what was happening. Um, but I did, I did get a glimpse that Matt was up ahead of me. Um, uh, unfortunately, there was a, they did a 12-second quicker pit stop, and that's what cost us. Um, you know, and there was only a 21-lap race, so even if you're a second a lap quicker than mm. somebody, it takes you half the race to catch them. So, um, yeah, a bit unfortunate, and we'll have to do a better job in the pit stops next time. And how do you find the track with 49 old cars on it? Was it good fun out there with the guys? Yeah, it was busy. Um, there's a lot of difference in the cars. So some of the cars, obviously, being a class car, um, you had to be very mindful of what was happening around you. Um, it was a little bit busy out there, uh, but it's always fun. You know, that quantity of cars around there, it's never boring, so awesome event. Yeah. And um, how, how do you see overall the event for production touring cars from even behind the scenes with things going on to run well smoothly to your liking? Yeah, I've got to say, out of all of the events that um, I've seen the New South Wales guys do, this has to be the best one. Um, at, at the premier track in the country, it was well run, it was well organised, um, everyone was respectful as drivers, there wasn't any silly things happening. Um, the, the club did a fantastic job, and hats off to the committee, they've, they've really done a fantastic job. Um, yeah, let's, let's hope we can do the same thing again next year. Well, thank you very much for your time and letting us have a look around the workshop here after the event, and uh, good luck for the rest of the year. Yeah, great, thank you very much. So there you have it, a thrilling first round for the 2013 Production Touring Car Championship from Mount Panorama. 50 cars taken to the course, with them all but one finishing the race at the end of the hour. We've already got 30 cars entered for round two at Sydney Motorsport Park at the end of April, and we'll be bringing you all the coverage from that event as soon as it happens. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time with Production Touring Cars.